By now, you know what a Volkswagen Golf R is. It's been out for a few generations, but it's back in the Mark 8 form. And we have it here in wagon form as well. Now the Golf R wagon exists for people who don't really want to spend a whole bunch of money on a fast German wagon, talking north of $100,000, and also don't want to jump into a performance SUV like the Tiguan R. They prefer something a bit more low slung, but with a bit more practicality than your average hot hatch. So I've brought the Golf R wagon out to some amazing drivers roads to see if it's worth actually buying instead of going for those alternative options. Now it's well known that the hatch rides pretty well and it's a bit of a riot to drive but let's see if they put the same amount of specialness into the wagon version of the Golf R. Now the Golf R wagon starts from a smidge under $70,000 before on-road costs and for the amount of power you're getting which is 235 kilowatts and 420 newton meters from a 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder unit under the bonnet there really isn't much competing in this wagon space below 100 grand. So let's talk about what you're getting on the outside. Well, this is the Mark 8 generation of the Golf. So you're getting that distinct front fascia, which means that the bonnet goes quite low and you have a more aggressive looking front compared to the Mark 7. Now in the Volkswagen logo, I like how all your radar is condensed into there rather than having a big square cut out of the grille. That's quite nice. I also do like on the R, you're getting this light blue accent across the front. The GTI gets a red one to let you know that's the more sporty version so the, if you couldn't tell because of the quad pipes and silver side mirrors um, yeah the light blue will let you know that this is a genuine R. And also you have these really quite nice and very bright and very capable ID lights which is what Volkswagen calls their LED headlamps here which are LED daytime running lights and LED headlamps and also they have a light bar that runs across the front which you can see here and down below we have plenty of aero to cool this powerful motor down so it has nice big openings and of course you have your R logo here which seems to be a bit of a magnet for any sort of wash mitts, so keep an eye on that. Okay, so this Golf R is painted in lapis blue, which is a very iconic Golf R color, and I think this is the color to get for the Golf R Mark VIII generation, just like it is in almost every Golf R generation. Now we have these estrel alloy wheels, which are 19 inches in diameter, and they are wrapped in a hand-cooked tire, both 235s, both front and rear. Now on the inside, you see these giant cross-drilled and ventilated brakes with big blue R calibers, and they just look the part and we'll test how they go in just a minute. Now it is worth noting the front brakes are only cross drilled, the backs aren't, they're just ventilated. So these are the most impressive looking ones up front. Now it's worth noting that the front camber of these wheels is so aggressive that Volkswagen's had to fit this extra piece of plastic on the front fender, which isn't too common. Usually this is only found on the rear, but because this is such an aggressive wagon, we have that on the front as well. Now we have another Golf R badge here on the side with a bit of trim, that's not a vent, but then you also have silver side mirrors, which go really well with these roof rails, which are also in that same silver paint and contrast nicely with the lapis blue. You also have keyless entry and exit, and you have a little Volkswagen logo here on the A pillar, which yeah, seems a bit funny, but that's something you're getting here on the Mark 8 Golf. You also have some sport side skirts and this car is obviously sitting a bit lower than your traditional Golf wagon and overall I think Volkswagen done a fantastic job of the proportions of the Golf R wagon considering this has a hatchback origin so yeah this looks like quite a bona fide looking wagon from Germany. So finishing up with the design of the Golf R it's a pretty clean rear end design you have a roof spoiler you have a little wiper back here you have your LED tail lights which have those progressive indicators which I like quite a lot you have an R logo below the Volkswagen logo and you don't pop the Volkswagen logo to open the boot here it has a dedicated button underneath and then you've also got an R specific diffuser with some giant mean quad tailpipes. I really like the silver finishing on them and I also think they sound quite good as well. So here's what they sound like. <laughs> Now the boot of the Golf R is automatic and you can open it from the inside your key or from the back just like this. But what you do get here is a lot of space and this yes is actually more space than the Tiguan with all the seats up. So in the back we have just over 600 litres of space and we also have a 12 volt socket in the rear but we don't have a spare tire which is found underneath the boot floor and so we have a giant cavernous space and a subwoofer so yeah that's just a bit annoying that there's not even a space saver considering how much space we have underneath the boot floor but at least that's more storage for your items now in true wagon form this is a nice flat load floor it's easy to carry heavy items in and out and there's a nice scuff plate as well made of plastic so it means it will take brunt of the actual pulling of items over it now there is a tire repair kit and that's found in this little 
side compartment, but again, not entirely useful like a spare tire might be. And yes, you do have a little cargo cover here, which is easy to operate and a nice addition here to the rear. Now the seats in the back fold in a 60-40 split, but there is a generous ski pass through through the middle of the actual middle seat. So it means you can carry four people in comfort and slide a bit more luggage through the middle. And if you want to fold the seats down, I really appreciate how there's pull tabs in the rear, which you go ahead and pull and the seats will automatically fly forwards to reveal over 1400 liters of boot space in total. And what else is cool is that this cargo cover has an inbuilt screen. So you can attach that upwards if you want to stop items flying through to the second row. Now look, the Golf R Wagon's rear seats are very practical. And I did an airport run in this car and I can tell you that fitting two people's luggage in the back for an international holiday plus carrying them around was not even a single bit of an issue. Now I'm five foot 11 and I'm very comfortable back here. I have plenty of space underneath the seat in front of me for my size 11 feet. I have plenty of headroom um, considering that this car is actually quite a low down wagon and even if I want to extend my head I'm not going to hit that roof. Now we have some nice plush headrests and when I mean plush they actually are quite nice and you can rest your head back here. Now you are sitting a bit more upright and you can't really recline too much more in the rear seats here but I am still quite comfortable. We have two USB-C ports in the rear. We have our own climate controls in the rear as well so you have tri-zone climate control in the Golf R wagon. I have plenty of little pockets here on the back of these little bucket seats. So I have two small pockets and one traditional map pocket. I have giant generous door bins as well. And I have windows in the back that do go down most of the way. So it's very good. Now talking about the center armrest, I have two cup holders in here, which are very useful. And yes, I do have access to that ski pass through, which means that I can access any luggage at any time if no one's sitting in the middle, or I can just make sure this is down all the time if I want to put any longer items through the car. Now, now the middle seat is going to be a bit rough so it is more of like a jump seat because you are spilling out into the outer edge seats and also there's a giant transmission and exhaust tunnel because this is all-wheel drive and yeah you're going to have a bit of a problem putting your feet in the middle so you will be playing footsies with the outside passengers. Now the Mark 8 Golf R's interior isn't too far off a traditional Mark 8 Golf's interior but there are some things in here that just add to make this car feel a whole lot more special and more sporty than your average Golf. First of all these two pieces bucket seats. These are fantastically comfortable, but they're also very grippy. You have electronic adjustment on this side, which makes it really easy to get comfortable, but unfortunately the same cannot be said for the passenger seat, which is manual. And I just think for the money you're paying, this should be automatic and memory as well. But I am a big fan of the faux carbon fiber weave look effect on the seats, the blue inside the actual leather itself and the blue piping around the seats and the R stitching on the seat itself. And these are very comfortable, even in the headrest, which you would think would be a bit more hard considering this is a bucket seat design. Now you have a Golf R specific steering wheel, which I really love. It's a really nice size. It is flat at the bottom, but it's not too flat. And you have some nice grips on nine and three. You do have more blue stitching around this wheel and you have a R logo on the wheel itself. You have some paddles, which have paddle extenders on them, which feel even better than your old generation, which had those simple smaller paddles. This new extender design looks and feels great. And you do have a little R badge on the steering wheel which is used to cycle through your driving modes. Now we do have this carbon fiber look effect again or this weaved look effect on the actual dashboard and along the door as trim. Um, yeah it just feels like normal plastic when you touch it and doesn't look too different from normal plastic trim. It just has a bit of a weave effect to it. We have some nicely finished pedals in the pedal box, but really that's as far as it goes visually for the changes in here. Apart from some blue stitching and some accent lighting, it's really in the screens and technology and driving experience for this car. Now I have a 10 inch driver's display and a 10.25 inch infotainment. Now the driver's display is customizable through the steering wheel, which I found very useful. And it means that you can cycle through a bunch of different views, very similar to Audi's MMI system. And also you have an option Option to have some additional views put on the screen. And these additional views include everything from a boost gauge to your gear indicator to your fuel consumption. Really, you can customize the screen to show whatever information you think is most valuable. We do have a heads up display, which really just gives you the basics of what's happening in the screen, like your speed, your cruise control information, and speed sign recognition. But now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, which is this infotainment. Now, I don't think it's unusable, but I definitely think it's really deserving of all the criticism it's getting. First of all, at night, these buttons down below the screen are sliders and they're touch sensitive, but they're not backlit, which makes it harder to navigate at night. 
Second of all, the actual user experience is a way over complicated for what it should be. When you jump into the home menu, there are three different views to look at. Now, I do appreciate that you've also got this hands-free sliding that you can do with the screen, which is quite cool, but it still feels quite rudimentary and I don't really use it all that much. But yeah, simple things like Apple CarPlay are hidden below a scroll or in a different page entirely. And I just think that this screen just needs a bit of a rework in terms of how usable it is, which looks like it's getting one in the upcoming Mark 8.5 facelift. Now, it's pretty much set up like a sideways tablet. So you have a home button here on the right-hand side. So it means that even though you're getting 10.25 inches of real estate, you're not really gonna get that entirely because one side is reserved for a hard button. Now to highlight how complicated this UI has gotten compared to previous generations of Golfs, I told my friends who jumped in the car, I said, go ahead and adjust the fan speed and turn off traction control. And for both of those instances, I had to intervene to show them where traction control turn off was and it took about two minutes to turn the fan speed down. Now, I'm not hugely offended with the screen and I could buy this car comfortably and use the screen day to day and not have a problem with it, but it's just getting used to it and also just getting familiar with the buttons makes it a bit standoffish at times compared to how natural it feels to interact with some other cars. Not to mention that there's these buttons down below which are touch sensitive as well for your driver's assist, your climate and your drive modes and parking assist menus, which just seem to go out of your field of view. So even when I told people to change the climate controls, they didn't even think to look at these buttons down below, which aren't even haptic buttons. So the steering wheel buttons are haptic and they feel quite nice. So I won't apologize for actually liking a volume slider here on the steering wheel, which feels like a touch screen and has haptic feedback. I like that quite a lot. But I will say that the non-haptic buttons here around the hazard button are just a little dull. Now below that, we do have two USB-C ports. We have golf embossed in a piece of plastic with some accent lighting, which I actually like quite a lot. We have a little shelf which lifts up to reveal your wireless charging pad for your phone charger. And I do like the fact that you can close that down over your phone to have another shelf. And we do have a weird little storage compartment next to the gear selector. And I just can't help but feel that the Mark 8 Golf was hugely influenced from the 911 because of this little tiny gear shifter that you have here and the more enhanced paddles, sort of trying to hone in the fact that the DSG or the automatic gearbox that we have here is the way to go. Now we do have some areas for your cup holders and you do have a little button here to have a additional cup holder which allows you to hold in smaller drinks which is quite useful but there's only one of them so your passenger is going to have to hold their drink and you have a pretty small center console cubby here. Now what's cool is that this car comes with the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system which sounds fantastic and does a really good job of doing surround sound in here and overall I really think this car is a wonderful upgrade compared to the Mark 7 Golf even though there's a lack of physical buttons in here. For some that might be a deal breaker but for someone like me I actually don't find it to be that difficult, but I definitely think that this center screen could do with a more simplified and more intuitive user experience. And the Golf R has not just one or two or three drive modes, it has comfort, sport, race, drift, Nürburgring or special mode and individual mode. So with six drive modes to choose from, I think it's time to head out and test them all to see how this thing performs. Okay, so the headline figures for this car. We know we have 235 kilowatts, which is about 70 horsepower shy of the 400 horsepower club, which many people consider to be the ultimate amount of power for a car before it gets too powerful. We also have 420 newton meters of torque available, all being sent via a automatic gearbox through to a all-wheel drive setup. It's not an unfamiliar setup. We've seen this on the Mark 7 Golf, but except we have a bit more power. Now, obviously there's been revisions in the drivetrain chassis and everything in between to make this a Mark 8 Golf. And this is just an absolute pleasure to drive. I really think uh, Volkswagen have done a really good job to make the Mark 8 Golf a more luxurious and plush drive. There have been some complaints about the quality of materials in here, but um, ultimately this car drives really quite nice. And obviously just as you hope a Golf would. Now really what we're focusing on are the drive modes. We have a couple here. I'm starting Comfort, which actually actually says E when you go on the um, actual drive modes because it's more of like an efficient drive mode. It sort of lets the gears sort of coast a bit more. It's very comfortable. It's a great drive mode if you have passengers and occupants that just don't like sporty cars. So that's what I really like about the sort of comfort mode in the Golf R. Really, if you blindfold someone in here, they would not know they're in a Golf R, I can tell you that much. Now, obviously that's not the mode you want to be driving in when you drive a Golf R. So you have a little R button here on the steering wheel. You can go ahead and press that and 
it will throw you into race mode, but first sport mode, because this car starts in sport mode, and that's really quite a lot of fun. It doesn't start in normal mode or anything like that, it starts in sport mode, which is very suitable for a hot wagon just like this. Now, sport mode just really livens everything up. It's not too extreme. It just sort of kicks in the button and says, hey, you know, you have a ton of power underneath the, uh, <laughs> underneath the bonnet here. Let's get going. And you can sort of get a bit on the throttle. There's a bit of a delay with the inputs compared to the racier modes in this car, but it's a great way to start your morning if you forget to jump into race or special mode. Now, really, the core focus here is race mode. So we'll jump into race mode and Look, stiffens everything up. Chassis, steering, and your throttle response, this is a racetrack mode. So the Golf R wagon is intended to head out to the racetrack. You can tell that by the bigger brakes, obviously, and how capable this car is through corners. Now, as we head through some corners up here, I'm just leaving this in S mode. I'm not gonna use the paddles just yet, just to sort of get a feel of how this car moves. And, oh, it is flat. That turbo hangs nice and strong, and it's really easy to see the appeal of this motor. Oh, <laughs> this is so much fun in this car, just to be ripping around, and it really does feel like a proper estate car. Now, what I like about this car is that it doesn't have the nimbleness of a hatch, so it doesn't feel like it's too skinny or anything like that. Instead, it really feels like a longer and obviously station wagon type vehicle, which is exactly what you want when you're looking for a wagon rather than a stretched out hatchback. But yes, it sort of does feel a bit skinnier like a hatchback, so it sort of allows you to feel a bit more confident to head through corners. Now, race mode is a bit aggressive on the shocks, so you will find that going through some back roads in Australia will be a bit uncomfortable, strictly in race mode. And that's where special mode comes in. So if we head into vehicles, if we head through the drive modes actually, you go to race mode, which will automatically bring up drift and special mode. So drift mode, I won't test uh, in this review because that is very much for racetrack use only. The car even warns you, and I'm more interested in reviewing cars into the future rather than losing my license. But what that will do is that it will send 100% of the power to the rear wheels for a rear wheel drive bias and drift experience, which is fantastic and very unique on an all wheel drive car. So that's quite a lot of fun to be had when you get the opportunity to use it. But as, we, as we can see here, the roads are pretty rough. And you know what other roads are kind of rough and where this car was developed? Um, yes, that would be the Nürburgring. So we can go to drive modes, head to special mode, and the car becomes a bit more alive. Now, the exhaust in this car is pretty raspy, which I like, but it's also got a fair amount of bass to it. And it just sounds like a very healthy motor. <laughs> And it doesn't sound like a slow or highly strung four cylinder. Instead, it just sounds so rapid, which I really, really quite like. And you do get some pops and bangs on overrun, which is really quite cool in the Golf Bar. And it's just a lot of fun. And Nürburgring, what it does is that it actually makes this car quite aggressive, but it softens up the suspension, which is very unique in a drive mode setting that's more aggressive than, say, race mode. You actually are getting a softer suspension setup, so it's great for back road driving just like this. And it keeps the revs nice and high because it's anticipating that you're going to be slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up for a lot of corners, rather than trying to squeeze out every bit of uh, kilometer an hour from the gauge cluster. Instead, this allows you to just sort of ride through the gears a bit higher and make sure you're always in that prime spot for the ultimate amount of turbo boost. Now, I can't help but feel that this car does feel quite soft compared to some other 200 kilowatt hot hatches that I've tested. And I wouldn't be surprised that this was a little bit more comfort orientated uh, for touring than the actual VW Golf R hatchback. And from what I've read from other reviews, um, that is the case. So yes, this isn't gonna be the full aggressive and over the top hot hatch that some people might anticipate but instead it's more of a sleeper type uh, estate which I like, like quite a lot it's like you know it doesn't look too rambunctious on the outside but you know as soon as you see those quad pipes you know it's game over Okay, now it's time to see how fast we can get this car to 100. So the claim not to 100 in this car is 4.9 seconds. Let's verify that. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> that is rapid. So <laughs> according to our timing gear here, we just hit 0 to 100 in 4.7 
4.9 seconds. The claimed all to 100 time in this car is 4.9. So yes, it is very easy to get this car 0 to 100 using launch control and actually get under the claim 0 to 100. That is very typical VW uh, because yes, they usually overstate how fast this car is. So 0 to 100 around 4.8 seconds, that is pretty fast for a family wagon. Okay, so should you buy one of these? Well, let me talk about the negatives first. Of course, the price. This thing is costing a bit of a pretty penny compared to some other 200 kilowatt performers, but there's an asterisk next to that. Now, yes, the infotainment is a bit more frustrating to use than the previous generation. And finally, of course, this is a bit longer and a bit heavier than the hatchback alternative, so it's not gonna be as nimble as that. But here's where the good things start. This side of $100,000, there really isn't much competing in this direct space. You're either gonna have to compromise for an SUV body style, or you're gonna have to compromise and get front wheel drive, or you're gonna have to get less space. So where the Golf R really shines is the amount of practicality you're getting, the low down, slung proportions and also lower center of gravity compared to an SUV. And of course, you're getting a honking 235 kilowatts paired up with a fantastic all-wheel drive system. So you're really gonna have to be shopping north of $100,000 to get something similar to this. Now, yes, I know the Skoda Octavia RS as a wagon exists, but it's really not quite the same as this. It's more of like a GTI style wagon. And if you wanna get something similar from a German manufacturer, you have to go and look at something like an Audi S4 Avant, and that's gonna be costing a bit north of 100 grand. And to be honest, not for a whole lot more performance. Now, with all that said, if you wanna see more reviews just like this of fast German wagons or any Golf R reviews, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like, and leave a comment down below if you want me to answer any of your questions. And so with all that said, thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars, and I'll see you in the next one.